about the borders, it's one of our most important security issues. There's talk about building a fence all across the border with Mexico. <laughs> right, do you, do right. you support that? Yeah. Do you support amnesty? Do you support guest worker? I, um, uh, I support security at, at the borders. I think security is enormously important uh, in the post September 11 uh, period. I think we have to know who's coming in this country. We have to be able to identify them. We have to be able to figure out who they are. Uh, I do think that with the fence, the fence honestly has to be a technological fence. Uh, the head of my, my party, the new head, uh, Mel Martinez, who's a senator from Florida, great guy, uh, he was being interviewed about four or five months ago, and they asked him about a fence. Do you support a fence? Do you think a fence should be put up? He said, sure, you can put up a fence if you want, except the only people that will put it up will be the illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. Nobody else will be, will be building that fence. And uh, I, I, I thought what, what the point that Mel was making was we need a technological fence. We need to be able to photograph people, observe them, see them, know who's there, record them. And then I think there has to be regularization for the people that are here. There's got to be a program to regularize the people that are here as you establish security at the border. And I would add to uh, many of the proposals, because there are a number of them in the House, the Senate, and the President has put forward. I would add to that, uh, at the end of the road, if somebody's going to earn citizenship with whatever other hurdles are put in the way, at the end of the road they should be able to speak English, they should be able to read English, they should have some knowledge of American history. Uh, particularly if you're going to regularize somebody who was in an, in, in an does, undocumented status. Does that mean amnesty, though? I mean, does... uh, it doesn't mean amnesty. It means earning it. It means, uh, uh, here's the experience. I said I learned a lot from being mayor of New York City. I was mayor of New York City. We had a tremendous amount of crime. We did a survey. We figured out there were about 400,000 illegal or undocumented immigrants in New York City. The Immigration Service deported 1,500 a year. That was the most they could ever deport, 2,000 a year. So I figured out I had 398,000. Now the question was, how do you handle that? What do you do with it? Uh, there's, there, the, 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 and then when we would catch drug dealers and criminals, we'd turn them over to the Immigration and Naturalization Service, and I'd say, you know, put them at the head of the line. Get, let's get rid of these drug dealers and criminals first. And they were uh, dealing with, um, you know, somebody's maid and uh, uh, somebody who m maybe was teaching at a college and just right. didn't have the right papers, or somebody who was uh, working in a restaurant. And Well, th th that's all an issue. But the drug dealers and the criminals, and now the terrorists, are an issue. And if you, have, uh, if you have a law that isn't working, and you have thousands and thousands and millions of people, then the terrorists hide among them. And we have to have a law that makes sense. And that's why I think you've got to come up here with a solution that says much more security at the border, register people, document them, have English at the end of the line, but then have a system to regularize people as well. You've got a lot of conservatives coming on board your campaign. Latest one is George Will. Let me put up on the screen what he said about it. He said, let me make the case for Giuliani. People are going to ask what I'd call the seven-minute question. Nightmare scenario, you're the security advisor. You're awakened in the middle of the night. You have three minutes to get the details of an attack coming on the U.S. Then the president, who you notify, has four minutes to answer. That's seven minutes. Which candidate fits the seven-minute question? Is that you? Are you ready for that? Um. Yeah, I'm as ready as anybody could be, and I guess as uh, maybe more ready than, than some, because I've, I mean, I've lived through crisis. I've lived through crisis. Uh, September 11 is the, obviously the, uh, the biggest one that I've lived through, but being mayor of New York was a crisis a week, right? <laughs> crisis and an emergency minute, right? every other day, yeah. and, um, and you get used to it. I mean, you get used to being able to keep focused, uh, uh, take advice, uh, understand that you can't that you can't get too excited in, in any one situation. You've got to remain, you gotta remain uh, very focused, and you have to remain optimistic about the result, and you've got to communicate with people, and you have to be transparent. Let me ask about Iraq. Um, you've generally been very supportive of the president in the Iraq war. Is there anything you would have done differently? Do you think there's been any mistakes made? Uh, well, sure, the president has, has explained yeah. the mistakes that made. I mean, we, we, the, um, if we're, you were we're, in the situation, if you were the president. I think, I think you can go back, and, and as we uh, develop positions and we explain things, you, you, I think it's quite appropriate to go back and explain, well, I might have done it this way, or I might have done it with more troops, or I might have done it some other way. But here's, here's the reality of it. We're at war. And we're at war because they're at war with us. I mean, it, it, sometimes when you listen to these debates in Congress and you listen to the politicians debating, you sort of get the impression that they, they think we're in control of whether we're at war or not. It doesn't matter what we think. They're at war with us. They want to come here and kill us. And they did on September 11, and they did a long time before September 11. Way back in 1993, they came to this city and killed people. So we, we've got to put Iraq in the context of a much broader picture than just Iraq. And getting Iraq correctly, in other words, getting stability there, is real important, and I support, 
I support what the president has asked for support to do and what General Petraeus has asked for support to do. Not because there's any guarantee it's going to work. There's never any guarantee in, at war. But if we can come out with a, with a correct solution or a better solution in, in Iraq, it's going to make the whole war on terror go, uh, go better. But we've got to get beyond it. We've got to get beyond in Iraq. Essence, have we, people forgotten? Well, it's natural, right? I mean, uh, you have a terrible, a terrible attack like September 11, 2001. Right in the aftermath of it, there's tremendous unity. We understand that we have to be on offense against terrorists, that we have to make it bipartisan, that this isn't about being a Democrat or Republican. It's about being an American. Now you get further away, and that lesson isn't as vivid. And, it, and, and all wars have that happen. This is a difficult thing to do. But we've got to start getting beyond Iraq. We've got to, we've got to be thinking about Iran. We've got to be thinking about Syria. We have to be thinking about uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan and making sure that uh, the transition in Afghanistan goes correctly. We have to be ready for the fact that whatever happens in Iraq, success or failure, success will help us in the war on terror. Failure will hurt us, but the war is still going to go on. They're still going to want to come if, here and kill us. If your President Baker Commission recommends sitting down with Ahmadinejad and in Syria, would, would you take that recommendation? I, would, would you I, sit I, down with I, I, thought, like I thought one of the mistakes of that recommendation is you almost can't put it up front. The minute you put it up front, you give them all the leverage and you take all the leverage away from us. That, that recommendation would have been better delivered quietly, secretly. Mm -hmm. And then, 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 you, then, then through back channels, you find out, can I achieve something with Ahmadinejad? Can I achieve something with Syria? Right now, it doesn't look that way. The better thing to do with Iran is to put pressure on them and to let them know that we will not accept there being a nuclear power. The, the nightmare of the Cold War was nuclear weapons in the hands of an irrational person. That's well, I don't, I, I don't want to live through that nightmare. But we're almost out of time. Who's the bigger Yankee fan, you or Hillary? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could, we could do a debate on Yankee trivia and find you could, out. <laughs> really quickly, your thoughts on, on Hillary, Barack Obama, John Edwards? I think they're all, uh, you know, worthy people, and they're all people that are going to fight it out for the Democratic nomination, and I have the foggiest idea which one's going to win. Right now, it looks you like Hillary. Hillary. You think it will well, I mean, she's a, all, you, all you can do is look at polls, right? Right now, she's ahead, but uh, it's a long way away, and, and, and none of these races are, are over yet. Senator McCain, Mitt Romney, Newt Gingrich. Very good men. All very, very good men. Very worthy men. Very good men. Some are uh, very good friends. Others, I respect all of them. I've, I think I've campaigned with each one of them. At one, I've, uh, I campaigned for, for Mitt when he became uh, governor of uh, Massachusetts. I've campaigned uh, many, many times uh, together with uh, Senator McCain. He's campaigned for me. I've campaigned for if him. If you get the nomination, do you have Newt any doubt you would, you would beat Hillary Clinton? Well, I'm, I'm in this to win. I mean, I, I have no idea who's going to get the nomination, but you, you, you do this because you believe that you can, you, can, you can win the nomination of your party, and then you believe that you're the strongest candidate to win the election for your party. Name three people who you would think of for vice president. Oh, I can't name vice presidents right now. I just told you just three really worthy. I told you three they really would, worthy. People, they would be right? three. They're really, great, they're really three great, great, great men. But no, you can't. You cannot be thinking about vice president at this point. It's uh, enough to think about well, how to put this together, how to get it organized, how to get it announced, uh, how to put together your fundraising, wh what the major issues are, and how to best articulate them to the American people to show leadership and strength. And and um, my my campaign is going to be about the future. I mean, the past. The past is what we have to learn about how to direct America to the future. And the whole purpose of doing this is because you can make this country better. You believe you can. As mayor, and um, we got to run here, but as mayor of New York, I can't wait. If you, if you were president, it would be interesting. I don't think anyone's seen a press conference until they've seen a Mayor Giuliani press conference. You know, I told so, Tony Blair once, it reminds me of the, um, it reminds me of the same thing that he, he would go through every week with, when they did the question right. and answer period in the parliament. It's very, very, very similar. Very combative. Too. I mean, combative, but it keeps on your toes. It means every single day, you have to know what the heck is going on, and if you don't, there are at least two or three members of the press that are going to make you like a fool. Mr. Mayor, <laughs> congratulations. Best Thank of luck you. to you. Thank you for being Thank with us. Thank you very Appreciate much. It.